Welcome to the lesson on method of rectangular components. Method of rectangular components is the method by which you can take multiple vectors that aren't at 90 degrees to each other or 0 degrees to each other or 180 degrees to each other and still accurately determine a resultant. What we're going to do in this uh, video is we're going to take a practice problem out of your AP book so if you turn to page 76 and look at number 5, let's read that question here. It says a roller coaster moves 200 feet horizontally, then rises 135 feet at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Next it travels 135 feet at an angle of 40 degrees below the horizontal. The book says, use graphical techniques to find a roller, coaster's display, roller coaster's displacement from its starting point to the end of this movement. Graphical techniques would simply mean that you would use a scale drawing, ruler, protractor, and you would draw it out to scale, making sure you do all your measurements carefully, angles properly. You would draw the resultant, you would measure it with a ruler, uh, convert it back using a scale and then measure your angle with your protractor when you're done. The problem with this method is you can probably hear it described is that you can make small uh, mistakes in measuring even off by a millimeter or so and that would cause you discrepancy among what your resultant should be. As physicists we often like what is the exact real answer. This method of rectangular components gives you that answer. Okay, So I'm going to show you how to do this using this question. All right, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to label our vectors with the appropriate information given in the problem. We're going to call this first one vector A. And it's 200 feet. We're going to make that three sig figs. Vector B, 135, 135 feet. Let me get rid of that, make it look nicer. And this is at 30.0 degrees above the horizontal. And then our third vector, we're going to call vector C, also 135 feet. And it is 40.0 below, 40.0 degrees below the horizontal from the end of vector B. Okay. We're using this labeling system because as you can see, we're going to develop a chart here to keep our information organized so that we can do our, our calculations in determining what the resultant is. In method of rectangular components, what you do is you take each vector and you break it into its x and y components as we discussed earlier. If we look at vector a, a lies in the x plane. So it has all of its value as an x component. The 200 feet is all in the x direction. Vector a has no y component. However, because vector B is at an angle, it has both an X component and a Y component that we'll be calculating here. Likewise with vector C, it has an X component and it has a Y component that we'll be using for calculation purposes. In addition to that, um, after you've sketched this out, you probably want to give yourself an idea of where your answer is going to be, just to see if your answers make sense as you go along. Our resultant is always from the tail of the first. In other words, this, this question asks for the displacement. Displacement is where you end up relative to where you started from, no, ma no matter the path you took to get there. So the resultant would be this blue vector that you see extended all the way from the beginning to where we ended up. And for a resultant, we would need both its magnitude and we would need its direction as indicated by this angle theta. Okay? All right, let's get right to it. So, <clears throat> to calculate these components, we start with A. AX would be a times the cosine of zero degrees. Well, AX would be 200 times the cosine of zero degrees 
which would be 200 feet. The y component of a, a y, I know we don't have it, we're just showing you the method here, would be a sine theta. And these trig functions hold true for angles that are measured from the x-axis. So a y would be 200 feet sine of zero degrees, which is of course zero. Okay. All right. Let's do our b components. Vectors b, bx. I'm just going to shortcut a little bit here. Bx would be uh, 135. cosine of 30 degrees, so bx would be 116, go ahead and calculate, pause if you need to, 116.9 feet. What we like to do when we do these kinds of calculations, this whole problem has been given in three sig figs here, so we know our answer is going to be to three digits. What I want you to do is I want a with any calculations that you do that aren't a final answer, I want you to take them out one extra digit so you don't sig figure yourself out of a correct answer. We'll now go ahead and calculate the y component of b, which would be 135 sine of 30. So by would be, go ahead and calculate. 67.5 feet. Okay. All right. Now, the other thing I would encourage you to do in these problems is that when you get an angle like this for C, is that you use the actual angle on the rectangular coordinate system. You can see that it's 40 degrees below the horizontal. Well, what angle would that be on the rectangular coordinate system? It would be 360 minus 40, which would be 320 degrees. Why am I suggesting you do that? Because by using the actual angle on the rectangular coordinate system, even though your trig functions of 40 degrees and your trig functions of 3020 are going to be uh, numerically the same, it gives you the appropriate sign for your x and y components. I'll explain more on that in a moment. Let's go ahead and do the x component of c, 135 cosine of 40, uh, sorry, 320 degrees. So cx equals 103.4 feet. Okay? And if you had done that with 40 degrees, you would have gotten the same exact answer. However, let's do CY. 135 sine of 320 degrees. So CY equals, and when you do that, you get negative 86.8 degrees. Notice by using the angle from... Uh, that it would be on the rectangular coordinate system, sine automatically takes care of itself in regards to your pluses and minuses. If you use the 40 degrees, and that's fine if you want to, but it's now on you to remember that the y component of this c vector is in the negative y direction and to assign it yourself a negative value. Okay, So that is a preference issue for those of you who like to stay out of trouble in case you uh, make little mistakes like that once in a while, this would be to your benefit. All right, now, what do we do next? Rx is simply the sum of Ax plus Bx plus Cx. When we add those three x components together, we get a value that's 420.3 feet. Think about it. What you're really doing is you're taking A, which is 200, you're adding it 
to B's X component, which was 116.9, and you're adding to it C's X component to get the X component of the result in itself. Let me, let me show that up here. That this would be the X component of the resultant. And we should label R up here. Okay? Well what that if you add, you go across that blue dotted, that blue dash vector, which is Rx. Okay, you can see how it's the sum of all those X components. Okay? Likewise for Ry, Ry is going to be Ay plus By plus Cy. 0 plus 67.5 minus 86.8 gives us negative 19.3 feet. Okay? That would be this component over here that we would label Ry. If you can see what happened here, it went up 67.5 feet vertically and then came back 86.8, it should be feet, not degrees, 86.8 feet down, giving us a net y, uh, y displacement of negative 19.3 feet. Okay? Now, why have we done all this? What is the relationship between Rx and Ry? Well, Rx lies in the x-plane, Ry lies in the y-plane. That means they are perpendicular to each other. So what we have formed by Rx, Ry, and R itself is a right triangle. And we now can proceed with this problem to calculate the values of R and theta. So R squared would be Rx squared plus Ry squared using Pythagorean Theorem. So R squared would be 420.3 squared plus negative 19.3 squared. Add the squares, take the square root, pause the video if you need time to do the calculation, use it to check your answer. We get R is 421 feet to three digits. We now have to find the angle. What trig function relates the angle in Rx and Ry? <coughs> well, Ry is opposite and Rx is adjacent, so that would be tangent. So the tan of theta would be opposite, which would be your y component, negative 19.3 over your x component, which is 420.3. How do we just get theta? Theta is the inverse tangent of negative 19.3 over 420.3. When we, when we do the inverse tangent of that, go ahead and calculate. We get negative 2.63 degrees. To three digits. Does our answer make sense with what we've calculated here? Based on our diagram, it does. We have a resultant of 421 degrees and it's 2.63 degrees below the x-axis. So we express our final answer, r equals 421 feet at negative 2.63 degrees and that's all we need to say because everybody in the room understands where negative 2.63 degrees is on the rectangular coordinate system. All right, that'll do it. That's the method of rectangular components. And uh, we'll have some more practice with this, both outside of class and in class.